Coming up on River City Presents, singer, songwriter, and blues guitarist Alonzo Pennington. Welcome to River City Presents. My name's Daniel Hurt. My guest today is a singer, songwriter, and blues guitarist who's been around a long time. He's coming from a musical family from Caldwell County, and he happens to be a friend of mine, Alonzo Pennington. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. This is really cool. Well, I'm very glad you're here, and it means a lot to me that uh, I can give you a call and you make time in your busy schedule to come out here. But, uh, you know, you played here 10 years ago at Backstage Pass, and yeah. I, you had a full house, but I couldn't even get you two ferns. Man, here. I almost brought you two of them. Maybe we'll get you some points at us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of lattice, too. Right. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to ask you first, just out the gate, what, what, tell me what you make of this. So Harper's Guitars said, describing your music, that you take a smattering of vintage Allman Brothers band, a dash of Stevie Ray Vaughan, a spoonful of Albert King, a dollop of Jimi Hendrix, and a pinch of Warren Haynes, throw them all together in one big old pot, and you've got Alonzo Pennington, a satisfying musical stew that's guaranteed good for the soul. So, does that about sum you up, you think? Well, it's, I think they were, just didn't have so much room put on there because there's a whole lot more musicians I've been influenced by along the way. <laughs> you know, I was just missing Chet Atkins, Merle Travis, and Jerry Reed, and of course, most importantly, my, my dad on there. But uh, Harper Guitars is, is a great, great guitar company. I, I've got guitars of theirs, and there's nothing that fits in my hand and plays any better than what they make. Do <laughs> you think that, uh, you know, one of the things that I enjoy about your music is, is it, it feels uh, familiar. You know, it's like, in, in a good way, it feels like home. And uh, I think it's because... It and yes. I think it's because we have so many similar tastes in music that it feels so familiar. Well, there's that, but then a lot of it is, is you know, I grew up playing with people in this area that you know, their styles and things, if, you know, it rubs off and you pick up little bits here and there as, as a kid growing up playing. And so it should sound familiar because, you know, if you've heard any other older guitar players, you know, like uh, a Stanley Walker, somebody like that, you know, you've, you've heard somewhere where I've picked up yeah. licks and notes and stuff. So it, and, and the thumb picking style that, that I'm known for, my dad is really known for. Um, yeah, that tell, is a tell Western Kentucky, that. you know, originated music, you know, that Merle Travis and, uh, Mose Rager and some people around Muhlenberg County, that's what, where Thumb Picking was born. And Thumb Picking, of course, went into a, a rock and roll with Elvis, with Scotty Moore playing guitar for him, like on That's All Right, Mama, and uh, to the Everly Brothers, of course, from Muhlenberg County. Mm -hmm. There's so much right here in Western Kentucky that, you know, has went all over the world. Now, musically. you're from Princeton originally. Talk, mm -hmm. talk about your upbringing. Uh, you said your dad, Ed, played bluegrass and country music. Yeah, that's uh, sort of where you started, right? Yeah, uh, I got my first job at uh, 13 playing uh, fiddle for a square dance band at the American Legion in Hopkinsville. Every Saturday night is quite the education for a 13 year old sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, you know, I've, I've always kind of geared towards hanging out with people older than me. Mm. Of course, now that, like you said, I've been around a long time. Uh, it, it's odd kind of transitioning into being one of the older ones and one of the veterans. But, <laughs> And, uh, you know, looking around, one of the bands I play in, The Extraordinary Gentleman, I'm the oldest guy in the band. And it, it just, it hit me one day, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the, I'm the old guy? <laughs> what? You know. Yeah, you've gone from being, playing the fiddle at a square dancing thing to now being the hey son, I've been here for a little bit. <laughs> Man. But there's so many great musicians, and, you know, you, the age, when you play music, it, music is one thing that can then bridge race, age, gender, because it, it, it has the ability to touch every single person. If you can hear it or feel it, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, but, you know. Uh, you know, one of the things I want to ask you about, too, is your, your dad and you play this thumb picking style. Yeah. T tell me about it, how it's different than playing other, other ways of playing guitar. Well, uh, first of all, you've got to have a thumb pick. Okay. And a uh, little guy there made by Fred Kelly Picks. And what that does is it uh, makes it where you can play with your excuse me, to say it the right way, makes you help you accompany yourself better. Mm. <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of like when they started doing that, they wanted to make the guitar sound fuller, make it sound more like a, a piano. So they were doing some kind of ragtime type stuff. Mm. But it's where you're playing. You got your bass and your rhythm right there together. And then you, with your fingers, you'll pick out the, the medley, melody. Amazing, and uh, is and Chet Atkins is the one who really brought this to the world. And of course, everybody knows that Chet was the the Nashville sound, and yeah. he 
so many records that he made that are from, I, I mean, you name it, everything that come out of Studio B and RCA. Yeah. That was, that was all Chet Atkins. Are there, are, so I'm guessing there's some calluses still coming, even though you got the pick, <laughs> right? If you're. Well, a little bit, you know, of course, a lot of these finger style and thumb picking players, they'll either grow their first three fingernails out real long or they'll put, and I used to do it when I played competitions all the time, was glue on nails on these three. <laughs> and so it was kind of weird going to school, so I'd just kind of keep that hand in my pocket all day. <laughs> you know, you didn't want anybody to make fun of you. Yeah. But that helped get a clear sound, but I've gone from trying to be a little more lower maintenance and just wearing my fingers out on it these days. Oh, no. I but, but yeah, these calluses here, I don't have fingerprints left on, on the left hand. <laughs> so you know, you've been doing it for a little off. while. <laughs> so there's a story that you learned to play, one of the first songs you learned to play was Merle Travis' Nine Pound Hammer when you used to play around. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, okay, it's kind of one of those thumb picking staple type tunes. So, you know, they get the Nine Pound Hammer, I See My Dreams, and the Cannonball Rag, which I'm gonna play the Cannonball Rag later, I'm gonna put it next to the guitar rag. Hmm. And uh, so I'll, I'll put them together. But, you know, it's the nine pound hammer, and that comes from, you know, these guys here in Western Kentucky in the coal country back when, uh, you know, I guess when they still had kids in the mines, we didn't have unions and protecting people, workers and things like that. Right. But, you know, that's one of the things that Merle Travis did was he took the uh, the way that the coal miner was treated here in Western Kentucky, took that, spread that out across the world and said, hey, look, look here, this is what's going on back home. But he kind of did it in a way that was funny and in a way that was entertaining but that was that and of course his biggest song he wrote was 16 tons yeah and uh, another day working yeah um but you know i, I understand though that uh, while you were raised on country music it wasn't that that turned out not to be necessarily well, your calling you 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 discovered kind of like i did blues and rock and roll and yeah. that became your passion right I, I, well, guitar became my passion but for guitar to become my passion, I had to discover things and sounds that really, really put a spark and a, lit a fire under my butt to want to do it. Because before, up till about the time I was 13, I was kind of doing it just because I could and because my dad had showed me this and that was our life was thumb picking and going to these things. And, but I, I, stepped, I stepped off the school bus one day and my, my buddy, Austin Bowes, we're still friends, he still lives in Princeton. <laughs> and, uh, he, he said, man, check out this. My brother Clayton showed me this, and he showed me the first little bit. To... Remember that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Red House. You know, and Jimmy Hendrix hit that. And he had the fuzz pedal going and the wah pedal going. It's like, man, the guitar's making so many cool sounds. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and so that's what I was discovering, that, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, and B.B. King, and Muddy Waters, and the blues and stuff like that. I was discovering that in my late teens from about 13 on when everybody else was uh, doing Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains yeah. and Nirvana and things like that. And I missed that until kind of now, but but I go back now and I appreciate th that song, those songs I miss and I'm discovering th songs there yeah. that, wow, how have I never heard this? And everybody in the world knows it. Well, and something else is I had originally, before I got into politics and now doing this, I wanted to teach music history because I, I discovered cool. Jimi Hendrix the same time, uh, about the same age you did. And I actually have the cassette <laughs> tape here was this the, was this, was yours on a CD? Did you have a disc I, man I, or a walk I did have a CD. I didn't have, it started out, I didn't have it. We had our, just our family computer. And that was the only CD player in the house, you know, the CD-ROM drive on it. <laughs> so that, that, I think my first album was a Muddy Waters Greatest Hits. And then I had another Southern rock album that had a Skinner tune and some Almond Brothers on it and Steve Earle. And, but I burned those up listening to stuff. And, but you, and you played, you know, over the years in a variety of musical circles from John Michael Montgomery across the country, yeah. and you played. Tell us a little bit about that. It was a great experience. I got to play on probably the most famous stage in music, the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville. Yeah. And, which, you know, it sounds like it'd be kind of nervous anyhow, but it's even more nervous when you get on stage and you don't get a sound check, you don't, <laughs> it's, it's a plug and play, you're just like, you, you get what you get kind of thing, and I was really green to it all, but, so I was pretty nervous when I did it, but that's been a while now, I hope I'll get to do it again one day, but under my own name. Yeah, and you also played Bill Street in Memphis too, right? Yeah, I've played there several times, and um, what was that like? Matter of fact, the, when, when I was here 10 years ago and, and did the, uh, the backstage, backstage pass, pass, yeah, I had, um, I had came straight in from 
playing on Bill Street. And there was a chance that I might not make it back in time if I advanced to the next round in the International Blues Challenge. And if, fortunately and unfortunately, I didn't. But I did make it into the, the semifinals, which was the top 16 acts out of around 650, I think, something like that. So. Wow. But that was pretty cool. And then I, then I came, and I didn't really know what I was expecting when I came here to the Fine Arts Center. And, and I was like, wow, they're treating me like I'm a professional. And, <laughs> and you, well, you know, you are, gonna, and, and I do, I try to be that way, but that gets lost a lot of times playing a lot of the bars and, and things. But the bars and things are, are good too because that's where regular folks without are, paying a $20 out. ticket can come hear you. And, and you can meet these people. And, and that's how you build a fan base is making friends. I bet you had it played a lot of places around here in particular. Do you have any favorites not to alienate any of our friends? And uh, I'm a regular at the Johnson Bar. I, I'm down there, you know, once a month or every other month, something like that. Mm. And and I, that kind of came into play because of a lot of the folks there used to work at Fat Moe's. Right. And the corner on the corner of Ninth and Broadway. Uh -huh. And I played there since since they had opened and Miss Mary and. Uh, and Mo, and of course they're both gone now. But man, that was a that was a great place for music for a long time in Paducah, and I was thankful to have been a part of that. Well, uh, you know, another thing, and you've had different incarnations. I know you've had the Alonzo Pennington Band, where you've had a horn section and everything, oh, and yeah. then you've been solo. But COVID sort of eliminated your ability to play at all. Yeah. I bet that was nice to you know be we, back out in 2020. You know, of course, by March I had my summer pretty well lined out and booked. And March 2020 is when they said we're shutting everything down. So I was like, that means all of my all my venues are closed and all my live performances. And what I missed the most, I mean, of course, I missed money, <laughs> <laughs> but I missed the interaction with with people. And and I'm not necessarily a people person. Yeah. But I do. My soul feeds off of being able to play music and 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 give that gift of that I've been given to be able to spread that and. I did a lot of that through Facebook Lives and things like that, but it just wasn't the same as being able to sit down or be in front of a crowd in, in a small room and playing requests and things yeah. like that. And now that, that COVID is sort of, well, at least people are going back outside and dealing with it as it goes on with vaccines and everything, you play in Nashville a lot now, right? <laughs> I do. Uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, three, four nights a week sometimes. Uh, What's your, what venues do you play down there? Uh, mostly at the, the Moxie Hotel. It's right there just off of Lower Broadway. And it's it's a little more laid back because it's usually a duo or or a solo show and it's acoustic, but not normally as wild as everything just right around the corner at Kid Rock's <laughs> big bar. Mm -hmm. But it's, sometimes it, it it overflows to us too. But it's always a lot of fun because that is the one thing I like about the most about playing there is you have new faces every 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah, and you'll get those folks that'll sit with you through the whole through the whole show through the whole four hours. You, but you, most of it, you get different people, and that's that's a great way to spread your music all over the world because it's a lot of people there. And you know, uh, there's a movie that I really like called Mr. Holland's Opus, and it's yeah. about Mr. Holland, music teacher. I'm sure you've probably seen mm -hmm. it. You know, he's teaching this girl how to play clarinet, and she's not having a good time, and he plays the Kingsman, Louis Louis, and he says, you know, you've got to be having fun. It can't just be work. It's got to be fun. You've got to enjoy it because otherwise, what are you doing? I'm assuming that this has been a whole lot of fun for you over the years. It right? is. It's, I couldn't imagine doing anything else, you know, being able to put as much of me into any other job in my heart and soul. Yeah. But every now and then, you know, these late night drives, you know, when, when I play a show from like uh, this Friday night I'm playing in, in Nashville, I don't start until 11.30 at yeah. night. And I finish up 3 in the morning. And then I'll drive back to Princeton because, you know, you spend all your money on your profits on hotel rooms and stuff like that, then you know, you just, you know, you're not making any money. And that's the, that's the hard part about it is you have to figure out a way to still enjoy it while making enough money to support yourself. And, yeah. and I'm lucky because there's not a lot of other musicians in Western Kentucky that are able to find enough venues and have the opportunity. And, and it, that takes a whole lot from not just me, but it takes from the other venues. And uh, like I get a lot of help from, with childcare from my parents and uh, my my ex-wife's parents and, and her. And so that's, that makes, makes all this Family possible support. because everybody has has to kind of be on board because number one in my life is my little girl mm -hmm. you know and when she's all about music and loves every part of it and wants, she would go to every show I played if I could let her <laughs> but uh, you know she's eating up with more eat up with it more than I have ever been um, but if, if it wasn't for everybody helping out with her you know I would I would get a regular job and be back doing that just so I was with her well, I understand but 
you know, that she's the only thing that comes ahead of music, <laughs> you know, because I've, I've let girlfriends go over it. I've let... Yeah, you wrote the song Blind? Yeah, plenty, um, plenty of money go because of I want to play music. I could do a lot more and make a lot more money doing other things and qualify to do more things <laughs> that pay more, but... There's well, nothing, nothing better than doing what you love for a living. Well, let me ask you this before we break away and have you play. Uh, what, who do you listen to? Who's on your playlist? You know, I still find great stuff that's, that's old and been out since, you know, the 50s and 60s and things. But, and then I'll go back and listen to stuff like Ray Charles that I've listened to my whole life. Or looking, it just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. If I'm, if I'm in, a, in a, the musical mood, I might be listening to some... Robin Ford or somebody like that, just mm -hmm. playing where it's just instrumental stuff. But every now and then I'm in a songwriter mood. I want to hear somebody just pour their heart out with their voice like Tyler Childers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that guy right there, you could you just hear the pain in his voice and his songs. And it just depends on who's doing it and what they're doing and how how they're delivering it. Because it's once you understand the music, it's you understand it's so much more than just the music. It's about the person performing that what they're putting of themselves into that song, whether it's their song or not. Yeah. You know, like I like to take these old country songs and turn them into the blues songs that I think they were probably truly meant to be. <laughs> and uh, Which it, you're going to be doing some of yeah, that in a little bit. You right? know, but like a lot of the Johnny Cash songs, like Folsom Prison Blues, Johnny didn't, it wasn't a blues song the way he did it, but you know, you take it. I hear that train coming, you know, slowing it down like that. It's a total blues song. <laughs> and there's so many of those. A lot of Merle Haggard songs work great for that too. But uh, well, that's that's great. We're gonna well, let's just let you get to it. We're gonna right. break away and more with Alonzo Pennington in just a second. We're gonna break away. Here's some uh, original Western Kentucky music. You know, in the style of Merle Travis. This is what we call thumb picking. <laughs> guitar rack. Way down in North Kentucky, there's a fella mighty lucky by the way he makes his guitar moan. He's hanging around, singing around the company store, picking like a chicken goes to picking up corn. All the gals in the county all gather around him. He's got a rhythm in his bones. When the feet start scooting with shuffle and drag, every time I hear the rhythm of the guitar rag, it makes it moan grow. Gets a grumble and tone. Now when he starts to picking and to plucking the strings He can make a deacon do the bucking wing You know the fat and the skinny all do a little shimmy The head starts to wiggle and wag Well feet start scooting with a shuffle and drag Every time I hear the rhythm of the guitar rag Here it is There's a fella dang lucky by the way he makes the guitar moan. He's hanging around, singing around the company store. Picking like a chicken goes picking up corn. All the gals in the county all gather around him. He's got the rhythm and the bone. Well, the feet start scooting with the shuffle and drag. Every time I hear the rhythm of the guitar rag, makes him moan and groan. Gets a grumbling tone. Well, he can make a jackrabbit chase the hound. He can make a deacon lay the good book down. You know the fat and the skinny all do a little shimmy. It starts to wiggle and wag. Where feet start scooting with the shuffle and drag. Every time I hear the rhythm of the guitar rag.
original song. I wrote the song probably almost 20 years ago or so. And uh, it's called uh, Let It Show. I always like to introduce this song saying it's the first million seller I've never had. <laughs> You hear this song on your radio and There's one thing I want you to know No matter how high or how far you go I still love you and I'll let it show Ever a time that you need a friend, go on and give me a call, and baby, I'll come back again. I'm gonna sit with you till that sun comes up. Well, I still love you. Oh, baby, ain't that enough? The times were good. Hey, it was you and me baby, doing what the lovers should. And in my heart, there's a place I still go where I still love you, and I can let it show. first types of music I learned to absolutely love that I found on my own kind of was uh, was blues and from Stevie Ray Vaughan like we talked about and Jimi Hendrix and uh, Delbert McClinton is one of my favorites too and this song right here is an old blues song it's called Better Off with the Blues. Hadn't even tried to find me somebody else when you told me you were leaving. It almost came as good news. Yeah, it's the lesser of two evils. I think I'm better off with the blues. Well, now I must admit, I think about you sometimes. Not a day goes by You don't cross my mind But at the same time I think of all Everything you put me through sure Yeah, if I had to do it over again I'd say I'm better off with the blues Well, I know someday I'll wake up These blues, they'll be gone 
I'll forget about you and how everything went wrong. But if you have a state, I'd be dead in my tracks. Well, I still love you, baby, but I don't want you back now. I gotta go down to the sad side of town. Listen to the blues. I go down. I know just what to say. When someone asks about you, <laughs> they always do. I say, yeah, we had our good times, but I think I'm better off with the blues. American music is derived somehow from the blues, you know, from rock, especially rock and roll, but even country music, you go back to it, and even the thumb picking style that I play, you know, that came from a lot of these blues men traveling like the river boats and the flat boats. And uh, so I like to take some of these old country songs and turn them back, back into blues songs, kind of maybe this is maybe what they might have sounded like had, uh, had it not been. You know, whoever popular did it at the time. Take that ribbon from your hair. Shake it loose, let it fall. Let it soft upon my skin. Like the shadows on the wall I come and lay down by my side Till the early morning light All I'm taking is your time Just to be alone Just help me make it through the
another original song of mine is called welded steel and i like to call this my my love song for men not my love song for men but a manly love song uh, instead of flowers and things like that we're talking about uh, the bond that a good strong solid weld has <laughs> so this is the manly love song called welded steel Steel, we have a bond that's gonna hold on and on. You can't break it, no, and it don't bend. Our love is solid from end to end. Like the eagle soars, we up high, limit to our love, it is the sky. Bring us down, no. We're on top. Ain't no way our love is going to stop. Like a well to steel, we have a bond that's going to hold on and on. You can't break it, no, and it don't bend. Our love is solid from end to end. Next to you in our bed, maybe we get close, close as we can get. Cause I know I'd never ever find someone who could take your place, baby, cause you're the only one. Like we have to steal, we have a bond that's gonna hold on and on. Now you can't break it, Lord, it don't bend. Our love is solid from end to end. Like well to steal. back. Thank you, Lonzo, for coming on the show. I, I definitely appreciate your musical stylings, and, and I'm just really glad you came on the show. I appreciate I, it. You're a friend of mine. Man, I, I appreciate your friendship, and I appreciate the opportunity to get to come do this, because this is a great way to put out there what I do, and, you know, word of mouth and people being able to see your performance is how you get more work. That's and, right. you know, people can find me on Facebook, and uh, I'm pretty easy to find on there, and if, if you're interested, we do everything from small parties, like you said, the big band stuff with, you know, 10 pieces and full horn section for weddings and, and all kinds of things. your music streams on all available. Absolutely, from Spotify to iTunes to, there's, there's so many of them out there, but it's, I've tried to get it on every one of them. <laughs> well, thank you again, my friend, for coming on. That was my guest, Lonzo Pennington, blues musician, singer, songwriter. All of his music is streaming on all of the major platforms. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.